Hello, Options Traders. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone had a great weekend and off to a good start here for this week. And I just wanted to post a follow-up video here to one I posted this weekend called Money Manager Fail. And in that video, I made reference to a strategy called a box spread. And I have since received a few emails from people saying, what in the world is a box spread? And is it something we really need to know about it? Good question. The answer is yes, it is, especially for all of you using vertical spreads. So let's take a look at the box spread. Now, the box spread is primarily used by market makers or these ECNs, electronic communication networks. They're not a real good strategy for retail investors. The main reason is that they are commission intensive, and you'll see why in a moment. And there's also bid ask spreads. And because of that, it's going to completely destroy the strategy. But the box spread for market makers is a way to borrow or lend money with the market. That's primarily what they're used for. However, as retail traders, they can be used to help price vertical spreads. So if you're looking to buy a call spread or buy a put spread, for example, or sell it for that matter, maybe it's trading for $3. Could I maybe get it filled for $2.95? What about $2.90? How far can I push those limits? That's where we need to understand the box spread. Let's start with building the box spread. It is always built by two long vertical spreads. You're going to buy the call spread and the corresponding put spread, corresponding again, meaning that they have the same strikes and expiration. So for example, you might buy the 100-105 vertical call spread, and then you would also buy the 100-105 vertical put spread. Keep in mind that if you're buying the call spread, you're buying the lower strike, or 100 in this example. And if you're buying the put spread, you must be buying the higher strike because the lower strike call and the higher strike put always have to be worth more money. And so that's always going to result in a debit if you're buying the box. So why is it called a box spread? Well, good question. Let's take a look at some Microsoft quotes. And I'm just going to use the mark for this slide. But let's say that we bought the 100-105 call spread. I would be buying the 100 call here and selling the 105 call for this price down here. If I bought the 100-105 put spread, I would be buying the 105 put for this price down here, and I would be selling the 100 put for this price up here. And notice that those four quotes form a box. That's the basic reason of why it's called a box spread. The most interesting thing about the box spread is that it is a guaranteed position. It's a type of arbitrage. And so because of this, the box spread is guaranteed to be worth the difference in strikes at expiration. Now, in my example, we had them five points apart, buying the 100-105 vertical spread. That would be worth $5 at expiration. If it was a 10-point spread, maybe buying the 100 and selling the 110, it's guaranteed to be worth $10 at expiration. Now, that is true regardless of volatility or stock direction. The long box spread, meaning the one that we buy, is always guaranteed to be worth the difference in strikes. There are a lot of ways to show it, but probably the simplest is this. Let's take a look at these two strikes here, the 100 and 105. If I buy the 100 call, I'm gonna buy one contract here. I'm gonna put it under the plus sign because it's a long call. And if I sell the 105 call, I would be short that 105 call over here. That is a long 100-105 vertical spread. But to complete the box, I would have to do the same and buy the 100-105 put spread. And that means I must buy the 105 put down here and sell the 100 put up here. Now, if you remember your synthetics, and for those who don't, there is another video in here called Synthetic Positions, and it will make more sense. But take a look at what's happening here. So for the 100 strike, I am synthetically long. And for the 105 strike, I am synthetically short. So think about it. If I am synthetically long shares of stock at 100, and I'm synthetically short at 105, I am effectively buying shares at 100, selling them at 105, and that means the most I could ever make is five. But because it is a box spread, it doesn't matter where the stock price is. I am guaranteed to get that five point difference at expiration. Let's take a look at it graphically. This is gonna help you a little bit later in the presentation here, but let's say that we bought a 100-105 call spread for $3, that's just the market price. This would be our risk profile. Most we can lose is $3 down here. Most we can make 
is $2 over here. That's the maximum gain. And remember that maximum loss plus the maximum gain has to equal the difference in strikes. So if I can lose three and I can make two, that adds up to five, which is the difference in strikes. Now, if the call spread is trading for three, as I mentioned in that previous video, the corresponding put spread should be trading for $2 because it will result in exactly the same profile. And in that video, I said that buying the call spread is exactly the same thing as selling the put spread. Well, if the put spread's selling for two, assuming you can buy and sell at the same price, we would have to buy that spread for two. So if we bought the 100-105 put spread for two, this would be our profit and loss diagram. Maximum loss is two. For any stock price above 105 at expiration and maximum gain is three for all stock prices below 100 at expiration. But let's overlay them. Remember, we're going to buy the call spread and buy the put spread. And if we look at these two profit and loss diagrams in combination, this is what they look like. Notice that they're just mirror images of each other. They completely offset each other. And so your resulting profit and loss at expiration would be zero. And that's because we paid $5 for a position that can only be worth $5. There's no gain in it. There's no loss, but there's no gain. Certainly after commissions, it is a losing position. Now, as a little side note, sometimes traders say, well, what about early exercise? What if we're assigned early on one of those short positions? Well, if you're assigned early, it doesn't affect profitability. Now, this is only for the long box. It's not true for the short box, but it only forces the payoff early. So if you happen to get assigned early on one of those positions, it's actually a gift. So for example, let's say you get assigned on the short 105 call. All you have to do is turn around and exercise the 100 call. You received 105, you take that 105, you turn around and pay 100 for that long position, effectively bought it 100 and sold at 105. There's your $5, but you collected it early. What if you're assigned on the short 100 put and the short 105 call? Again, it doesn't matter. Just run through your rights and obligations and you will see that you will collect the $5 early. So even early exercise is not going to throw a wrench into this arbitrage. So the box spread is a guaranteed position. And as I mentioned, the box spread is guaranteed to be worth the difference in strikes. So what does that mean it's worth today? Well, mathematically, it must be worth what's called the present value of that difference today. This is going to be important to help you determine the proper value of a spread. So what does it mean when we're talking about the present value? Well, in finance, that just means what is the value today accounting for the time value of money? So for example, let's say that you are going to buy a $1,000 face bond that matures in a year and the risk-free interest rate is 5%. Well, what is the one-year $1,000 bond worth? Very simple. Take the $1,000 payoff in a year, divide it by 1 plus the interest rate, or 1.05, and it comes up to 952.38. So in other words, that bond in the open market would be trading for 952.38. Why? If you pay 952.38 and you collect 1,000 at maturity, you earned effectively 5% on your money as you should because a bond is guaranteed. So that's the connection when we're looking at guaranteed assets. We just simply divide by one plus the interest rate. We're going to do exactly the same thing with a box spread. So to keep the math easy, let's say that we have a one year box and interest rates are 5%. If you buy the 100-105 box spread, Theoretically, it's worth $4.76. We're going to take that $5 maturity value divided by 1.05, worth $4.76. So if the call spread was trading for three, I know that the put spread is theoretically worth $1.76. Well, that's all fine and good, but you're going to see in the real world when we start dealing with two prices, a bid and an ask. And not only that, but a bid and an ask on two different spreads we don't get anywhere close to this theoretical pricing. So for example, let's take a look at Apple, which was trading for 228.66. And let's just say that we were interested in this 46 day vertical spread at 225.230 strikes, whether it's the call or the put spread. How can we use the box spread to figure out where we could possibly place our trades and have a reasonable chance of getting it filled? 
Well, we're going to look at it from the market maker's perspective and then from the retail trader's perspective. And you're going to see something very interesting here. Remember that the market maker is trying to buy in the bid and sell in the offer. Retail traders end up doing the opposite. So how is the 225-230 box priced for the market maker? We'll look directly across over here on the bid is 265 for the call spread. And for the corresponding put spread is 225. And that means the market maker is trying to pay a total of $4.90. In which case, after 46 days, he's going to receive a guaranteed $5. Just like the bond, he's buying it at a discount, albeit a slight discount because there's not a lot of time remaining and also because interest rates are very low. But he's buying it at a discount and will be able to close it for the full $5 at expiration. So if he buys that box spread, his resulting profit and loss diagram looks like this. It's just the 10 cent profit. And notice it's a flat line. Again, it's an arbitrage. It doesn't matter where the stock price is down here. It's guaranteed to be worth the 10 cent profit at expiration. Well, that's great for the market maker. How is it going to look for you as a retail trader? So as a retail trader for the 225-230 vertical call spread, we would typically look at the asking price because that represents a seller, usually the market maker, not always, but it's definitely a seller. So if we wanted to buy that spread, we would look at this price right here for 285 and we could buy that call spread. What's it going to cost to buy the 225, 230 put spread? Look directly across the board. Asking price is 235. That means that we as retail traders, are going to be paying 285 and 235 for those two legs and therefore $5.20 for something that's only worth $5. So our profit and loss diagram looks like this. If you bought that box spread for those asking prices, you are guaranteed a 20 cent loss and we haven't even counted commissions. So what does that tell you? One of those sides, whether it's the call spread or the put spread, probably both, but at a minimum, one of them is overpriced. And at a minimum, we have 20 cents we can work with in here because we're being forced to pay 520 for something at best is worth five. Well, let's take a look at the market maker's interest rate. Remember the box spread is guaranteed, so it should be priced at the risk-free interest rate. Well, in our example, we saw that the market maker was trying to pay 490. So what interest rate is being implied here? Well, that's easy to figure out. Just take the $5 value at expiration divided by his purchase price. So $5 divided by 490 is about 1.02, a touch more, but roughly 2%. But remember, this is only for 46 days. So we have to annualize it. So how many 46 day periods are there in a year? Take 360 divided by 46 we get 7.8 and that means we need to multiply this 2% rate by 7.8. And so we're finding out that the market maker is discounting this box spread at almost 16% interest. Well, unless they're borrowing from MasterCard and Visa, interest rates are nowhere near this level. So not only do we have the 20 cents to work with, we actually have more because 490 is really too good of a deal based on today's interest rates. So now let's go back to our original problem. We're trying to buy the 225, 230 vertical spread, whether it's the call spread or the put spread. I'm just going to use the call spread for this example. But if I look at the mark and I see that it's priced at 275, let's take a look at the put spread. So I look directly over here and I see that it's priced at 230. So if you add those together, 275 plus 230 comes up to 505. So even priced at the mark, I still have a five cent edge against me on one of those spreads. I don't know which one, but I know that there's definitely room to work. And as I said before, at a minimum of 20 cents. So if the spread is overpriced, and I know that because it's adding up to more than $5, theoretically, I should be better off selling the spread so that if something comes out of that extrinsic value, it's coming out of a short spread and therefore will be a benefit to me. And so I should lean towards wanting to sell this spread. Now, another way, which I've talked about in previous videos, if you come back over here, if I pay 275, the most I could make is 225. 
But if I look over here at the put spread, I can sell it for 230. So there's that extra five cents for me. But what I'm trying to show you here is from the box spread, the fact that the box is overpriced, even at the mark here by five cents, I should lean towards selling this spread. However, let's say I wanted to, for whatever reason, maybe for morphing reasons or something, I wanted to use the call spread. Well, I know I've got bare minimum of five cents because that's showing up over on the put side, but I really have closer to 20 cents. Of course, the market makers aren't gonna give up that full 20 cents, but could we squeeze out 10 cents? Easily. If we place this trade for 265 here, we've got a really good shot of getting it filled. But notice that's a whole lot better than the 285 asking price. 20 cents better there, just between those two prices. And if we do it on the sale, there's 40 cents. That is a big, big difference for a vertical spread. I can either make more profit or I can close the same spread sooner for the same profit and take less risk. But those are some things that will help you to price your vertical spreads to find out which side of the trade you should prefer to be on and at what price you are likely to get filled. For those who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.